Last weekend, I, like most average 17-year-old girls, was sitting at home, doing homework, and casually watching reruns of the David Letterman show on YouTube. When I came across a video, an interview from 1995 with founder of Microsoft, Bill Gates. The video looked interesting, so I clicked on it and tapped my pencil rather impatiently for the fraction of a second it took for it to load onto the screen and continued to be disappointed by the 240p quality. But, <laughs> but I continued to watch nonetheless. Then the noticeably younger David Letterman said to Bill Gates, do you know anything about this internet thing? What's it all about? And Bill Gates said, it's crazy what's going on. People can now send electronic mail to each other. It's the new big thing. So here I was uh, streaming this video from high speed quality and from a Wi-Fi connection. And Bill Gates, 19 years ago, was saying that sending email was the new big thing. So I'm perfectly aware of how new the technology we use every day is to the way that we live our lives but I think it has become so essential to our everyday functioning that we tend to take it for granted. Let me demonstrate. Um, how many people in this room, hold on. Uh, how many people in this room today have uh, used a cell phone at some point in the last 24 hours? Okay, see that's almost everybody. Let's take it one step further. How many people in this room have used a cell phone in the past one hour. Okay, still most of you. Now, I want you to be honest with the next one. How many people have used a cell phone since I started talking today? <laughs> okay, so um, my fu uh, fundamental question here is how. How did we go from people uh, wondering about the nascent and nebulous nature of the internet to it becoming one of the most fundamental ways in which we live our life today? So the answer is not magic. The answer is computer science. So computer scientists are working in a collective effort all around the world to develop pro software, create programs, and mobile applications that make life today the way it is. So computer science is a powerful force, and it's making a positive difference all around the world. I mean, think about how much we've accomplished. We have landed the Curiosity rover on Mars. We, have, we are now better able to treat uh, and diagnose patients more efficiently because of uh, medical technology. And also, we're completely revamping the way that education is taking place, both at the primary, secondary, and higher education levels. There's infinite potential that is available with technology and computer science. And in order to tap into that progress, we have to sustain what has already been done. So I'm going to throw some simple supply and demand at you. According to a study by the Bay Area Council Economic Institute, by the year 2020, there will be nearly 1 million jobs that will be available in the computer science field. But this is the scary part. There will be only 400,000 computer science graduates to fill those positions. So the tech sector is growing at a higher rate than we have people to fill those positions. The US Department of Labor alone says that there will be a 30% hike in demand for these positions. So why is it that there is a, such a huge discrepancy between the number of jobs that are needed and the jump, number of jobs that we're able to supply? And the main reason can be attributed to the lack of awareness in younger generations. So at this point of time, experts at the College Board say that only about 5 to 10 percent of uh, secondary schools in the United States teach computer science, and based on the number of students who take the test annually. And in the five years alone, in the last five years alone, only about uh, 5 to 10 percent of students are willing to take those classes to begin with. And there's actually been a decline in the number of people who take those classes. So I'll, tell, I'll let you know how I personally got involved in computer science. It was the summer before my freshman year of high school. I downloaded the Apple so software development kit off the internet, and I taught myself how to program by watching YouTube tutorials. And I was lucky enough to have that exposure to know how to do that in the first place. But not everybody in the country has the same, has been as lucky as I have. So by introducing computer science within the schooling system and in, through the curriculum, we can reach out to the talent that exists all around the world. Another point I want to touch on is women in computer science. As a female who's interested in science, technology, engineering, and math, 
I realized how male-dominated a field like computer science is in particular. And in order to withstand global competition in the coming decades, we need to make sure that there is greater gender equality in computer science particularly. Because the number of women who have been in computer science has been on the decline since the mid-1980s. So in order to have better decision making, more creativity, and diverse output, it is essential that we have computer science to facilitate the progress that has already been made. So we hear names all the time. We hear Bill Gates, we hear Mark Zuckerberg, we hear Tim Cook, but we don't hear as many female names in that list. So in the coming years, we have to make sure that there's a greater involvement of uh, more women and so that they have the entrepreneurial spirit to move forward in computer science particularly. So I think we've established how important and how integral computer science is to the way that we live our lives. It's shaping virtually everything that we do, from our travel, to our work, to our leisure, and to our play. And what's important is that computer science is a key enabler for discovery and innovation. And I want to leave you here today with a challenge. When I looked back 19 years ago into the past, I was surprised at how far removed life today is from life 19 years ago. So my goal is that 19 years from today, when the next generation of teenagers is looking back at today, at their past, I want them to say, look at how far we've come. Thank you very much.